Hi everyone and welcome back. By popular demand, we're going to do another lesson on teaching your child to drive. And I know this is a very, very stressful topic for some people, especially some of the feedback I heard from the first one saying thank you. Uh, it's eased some of that stress, so great. I'm glad about that. Um, but you also needed more and I understand that too because all that one was about was um, the parking lot. So doing some turning, watching where the car goes, going from line to line, teaching the kids how to get the spatial relations in terms of their car, right? In the car that they're driving. So the, that, is, uh, that is number one. So number one is, is trying to get that uh, spatial relations with your car. Make sure they do that. Make sure they do understand. Watch the first video. Make sure they know the hand over hand, the 10 and 2, uh, and where to look with the car. There's a couple of other things that are really, really important about that video that you'll go, wanna go watch if you haven't already as well. And that has to do with moving with the speed of the car. Everything we're gonna do today uh, relates to that, okay? So uh, moving with the speed of the car is extremely, extremely important. And that is something we'll explain further as we do this particular lesson. So here we go, okay, so. Here we are, new neighborhood. Uh, as you can see here, this is a brand new neighborhood. There's no construction around here. If you have access to something like this when you first take your kids out, uh, use it. It's great. It's a great opportunity to do this and not have a lot of people around, not have a lot of uh, dangers around. But if you can't, then just use a neighborhood that's quiet. Do it at a time of day that does not have school buses, that does not have people coming home or to work. Um, those are very, very important. I mean, if you have to, you can use those times. Just be extra cautious with your kid um, to make sure that you are uh, keeping them safe as they learn for the very first time. Because of course, this lesson is the first time out of the parking lot. And so if we think back to the last lesson, uh, this is, uh, I was about to leave the parking lot and that's where we ended things. This is what we could, could, we could consider, pardon me, uh, the leaving of the parking lot, even though I'm now uh, in a neighborhood. If it is a neighborhood, just make sure again, like you, like we say, you try to go at a time that's not as, as extremely busy as um, say a school time or, or a rush hour time. Okay, so one of the things that we need to do is we need to make sure that our kids um, follow the things that we taught in the first lesson. The first thing is having an understanding of the power and strength of the car um, and how it accelerates, okay? So one thing that they're gonna need to do, I'm pulled over to the side of the road and this is a great opportunity if you're starting at the side of the road to really get them to do what we call a 360 degree check. It is so, so important that your kid does this. Uh, it is so, so important they get in the habit of doing this. And that does not necessarily mean looking at the mirror right away or looking at the side mirrors. What it means is a full look around the vehicle. The same as we're doing with the phone, we wanna make sure we have a full 360 degree look around our vehicle. Now the reason we're gonna do that, obviously, is to know our vehicle surroundings. It's really important, especially being new, to know what our vehicle surroundings are. We're not done here yet though, because if you're thinking driver's test, and I know some of you will just pull away from the side of the road as adults now and have lost this habit a little bit, um, but one of the habits that has to be started up is of course the turn signal. They need to say that they're going to pull away from the side of the road. The way they're gonna do that, of course, is with the signal. Now we've done our 360 degree check. Uh, the only other thing we need to do is check our mirror and our blind spot and everything looks good. So we are able now to pull away from the side of the road. Now, your child is going to be tempted to do very little with the gas pedal here and that's okay. We want them to be able to do that. Uh, we know the speed limit here is uh, is a residential speed limit, uh, depending on the, the unit of measure you use in miles per hour or in uh, kilometers per hour. Okay, so now we've come up to our first turn here. One of the things that we need to make sure that they understand that they remember from the first time, now this is a roundabout, we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna turn right. Of course they need to signal. Now they need to signal where we have a good distance ahead of 
the actual turn itself, not into the turn. So we wanna make sure that one of the things they do first is about 10 to 15 meters back from the intersection is when they need to signal their intent to turn the corner, okay? Now, once they've done that, the next thing we need to teach them is to look in the direction that they want the vehicle to go. So there's two things here that's important that you have to be able to stop and do this with them for the very first time, okay? We did this in the parking lot a little bit. Look where the vehicle wants to go, or where you want the vehicle to go, I should say, and steering with the speed of the car. Both of those things are a combination here. Um, and this combination is really, really important because we don't want the kids hitting the curb and we don't want them making wide right turns. And this is the way to solve both of those situations, okay? So the first thing that they're going to do is they're going to look where they want the vehicle to go. Now for me, that's way up here, right? Somewhere around there, okay? So as we start our turn, we're going to want to look where the vehicle is going to go, okay? now. With the other thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to wanna to start into our turn and we wanna maintain a distance of about a half a meter away from the curb. In order to do that, we must steer the wheel at the speed that the car is moving. And if we're looking to where we wanna go, we make this turn absolutely perfectly. And then as we come back, we let the wheel come back or we let it slide back with the speed of the car. So when we do that, the car comes no extra closer to the curb, the car does not go too wide out, and we've looked where we wanna go, and we're moving where we wanna go. Now, if you have a straightaway like this, that's really nice, because you can have them start to hit the accelerator, get them to feel what it's like for the car to speed up. Now, as we come to an intersection, before we say anything about this intersection, one thing we have to make sure that the kids are doing, looking 10 to 15 seconds ahead of themselves, not up here, we're talking up here, okay? And they need, when they're driving in a straight line, to be always, well, even at any time, looking 10 to 15 seconds ahead of where the vehicle is right now. Now there's two things that that does. Number one, it gives you an idea of what's around the vehicle and what's coming up, obviously. But the other thing it gives you is a straight line drive. So one of the problems that you typically have when they're driving is they look too close to the car and the car begins to drift to the middle or it begins to drift to the right. And that's just because they're looking too close to the front of the car. So your command, parents, when that happens, if you see them drifting toward the curb or you see them drifting toward the middle of the road, is simply eyes up, okay? Not, oh my God, you're going to hit the curb. Or, oh my God, you're heading into oncoming traffic. All they're going to do is just jam themselves into oncoming traffic or into the curb. You cannot say it that way. It has to be eyes up. As soon as they hear eyes up, they are going to look 10 to 15 seconds ahead and correct the vehicle. The vehicle will easily and quickly be corrected to go straight. So here I am, I'm driving along. I notice my youth driver's drifting to the middle, eyes up. And as soon as my eyes come up, I straighten out. So much easier, isn't it? Okay, same with along here. We're driving along and we're drifting toward the curb, eyes up. Now I know I need to look where I wanna go in the next 10 to 15 seconds. And as long as I'm doing that, I'm moving straight, okay? So that's where we wanna make sure that we can make sure our kids know exactly where to turn, or exact, sorry, exactly where to look, so that if the vehicle begins to turn, they're not getting themselves into any trouble. They can go eyes up and back to straight. Okay, now as we come up here, eyes are up, we've got the vehicle moving at a good pace, um, kids are learning, they're holding the steering wheel, their eyes are up, everything's going straight. Now we see we are about to come to a sharp left turn in the road. Now this is almost like a left turn, should be treated as such, uh, but it is not exactly a left turn, it's of course a curve in the road. It's important when you approach here to ask the student to come to a complete stop, if it's safe to do so, of course. And in a case where we have um, 
uh, empty neighborhood like this, it is safe to do so. We can explain something to them. Now, if it's not safe to stop right in the middle of the road like this because you're not in a new neighborhood, just pull over. If you need to help them with the steering wheel to just align them properly with the curb, that's okay too. Just make sure they're going very slow. Uh, pull over, put it in park, and explain what we're gonna do next. So we're, we're here, we're sitting just ahead of this curve. One of the things we need to tell our student is to continue to look where they want the vehicle to go, not up here then, because that's not where we want the vehicle to go. We want the vehicle over here, okay? So if we're thinking looking 10 to 15 seconds ahead, that's where that is, right? So as we look into our turn, that's what we wanna do. Now, as we approach it, we want to, and if I'm gonna make you think about this, parents, what are we doing with the steering wheel? We are turning with the speed of the car. See, as a parent, you're used to this. This is something you've always done. But for a student, turning with the speed of the car is not something that is typically easy to do because they don't know how to control a vehicle, okay? And then so we let it go slide back, okay? It's always easiest to let it slide back because it almost always slides back with the speed of the vehicle. So there, just take something off of their plate, okay? Some people say turn ten or uh, hand over hand on the way back, uh, but when we do that, um, again, there's the temptation to do it too fast and overcorrect. Uh, there's also the temptation to do it too slow and end up in the middle of the road. So we don't want that. Let, let them slide back. It's easier, much easier to do. Okay, we'll do left turns next. Okay, so we are approaching the end of a road here and we are going to turn left. Now a left turn, of course, is a little bit different. We're not staying close to the curb like we do with the right turn. And again, remember, right turn's only about a half a meter from the curb. You wanna keep it even all the way around. Here we're approaching a left turn, okay? And because we're approaching a left turn, we need to make sure that the left turn is nice and square. Now, the nice thing about doing this is if they're looking where their vehicle is going to go next, then they're going to do this quite naturally because when they get to the curb, you see here, this is not where we wanna go. Where we wanna go is over here. Well, if that's the case, as a student, I'm likely to just, as long as I'm turning with the speed of the vehicle, I'm likely to actually allow my turn as I'm turning with the speed of the vehicle to turn in a perfect square. It's actually really, really easy as long as eyes are up. And if we start to drift in this turn, and you can see here, we're perfectly fine. We're about to finish our square, very nice and square, eyes up, okay? That command can be used in the turn. In the turn. So if you start to notice that your student's sharpening the turn because they've started to look a little too close to them, eyes up, right? Eyes up, okay? So there we go, we've finished our turn. Our steering wheel comes back into place via the slide and we are doing just fine. We had a beautiful square left turn. So remember the big key to the left turn, you, you don't need to overcomplicate this. And this is one thing parents do a lot of, is, is a simple instruction, move, turn the wheel with the speed of the car and look where you want the vehicle to go. And as long as that happens, that vehicle is going to go exactly where that driver has commanded it to go. Okay, and so, so it's really just as simple as that. And if you find that they're drifting off to one side or to the other as they're making that turn, of course, then you can say, eyes up, right? And I want you to really get used to eyes up because you're gonna have this a lot. I mean, this is the first time, this is a point where we have no traffic around us in any way. In the next one, when we get onto actual city streets where there's traffic going in the opposite direction, you're gonna notice that one thing that students tend to do is be fearful of the oncoming traffic. And when they're fearful of the oncoming traffic, what they often do is drift because they're looking at the oncoming traffic. And when they're looking at the oncoming traffic, let's say a car was coming at us right now and they start to drift either off to this way to get too close because they're looking at them or are starting to drift to the curb because they're afraid that the oncoming traffic's gonna hit them, eyes up. Always eyes up, it has to be a firm command 
okay? I'm not trying to make it sound like they're a pet puppy or anything like that, but if it's a firm command, that will make them do it quicker than if, if not. If you have to grab the wheel, that's okay too. But again, don't jerk the wheel. Just grab the wheel and drift them back to the, the center of the lane, okay? There's no reason to jerk the wheel. They're not gonna hit the curb hard. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Eyes up is the first command if they continue to drift. You just simply grab the wheel like this and turn it gently. Gently turn that wheel so that they are not, first of all, jerked right back into oncoming traffic. And second of all, that they don't feel scared when you do it. All right, that's it for this lesson. Nice and short, but it's a, it's one you're going to want to take them on for a little bit. This is not something that's going to be as short as this video. You want them to get some reps in, you know, sports, when you're getting, uh, you know, re repetitions. And that's what you need here. You need them to do it a number of times. And they're not always going to do it perfectly, but you have commands for that, like eyes up and move with the speed of the car, turn with the speed of the car, um, and look where you want the vehicle to go. That's 10 to 15 seconds. We call that melt. And when I taught young drivers, which was minimum eye lead time, um, same thing, whatever you want to call it, minimum eye lead time, uh, or just looking 10 to 15 seconds ahead, it needs to be ingrained in them so you're going to need some reps here so make sure you do this make sure they get lots of practice at this and then you can head to the busier roads and we'll cover that in the next one